I'll do the limbo. So let's call the meeting to order. Uh, we have a few amendments to the agenda. Um, we will um, add in uh, public comments and they will go after our amendments to the agenda. Um, and then we have a personnel discussion at the end of the meeting. Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, because um, it's, it's um, subject matters are sometimes surprising when they come to us and sometimes not. Um, and we want to respond as best we possibly can with thoughtfulness. Um, so as a board, we, we don't immediately respond to you just so that we can digest the comments. We think that's really important so that we have a thoughtful response to you um, as well and um, so that we can hear you too and take that into consideration. But if anybody has any comments they'd like to make tonight, please do so. Um, and when you do so, please introduce yourself so that um, Raina can put that in our minutes as well. Anyone? Oh, it's gonna be a quiet group. Sure, I'm Sam Siegel, I'm here to talk about uh, the French program. French no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Humor is always appreciated. As I said, I will not comment. Yeah. I'm sure you're all thinking about Spanish. I just kind of wanted to remind you um, that it is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts in this community. We've kind of come uh, to appreciate it and to expect it. And it's something that um, you know the community has had for a while. And I would encourage you to try and come up with a way not to take it away from the K through three kids. Um, that all the literature seems to show it's really, really crucial for, especially those very young kids. I know, based on the last meeting I attended where this was discussed, that you generally seem to be supportive of it. And I would just say, let's try and get it in next year, because I think if, it, if we lose it even for a year, that's a real disservice to those kids who won't get introduced to it properly and will be sort of off track coming into fourth grade without it. So if there's a way to do that, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, so now I have to ask you all to leave the meeting because we're going into executive session. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And the time is 6.07. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anticipation note. If I could, the, um, each year we have um, gotten the tax anticipation note. Basically, what happens is we have cash flow requirements in the school district that arrive before the actual taxes uh, are collected by our districts and brought in to, for us to be able to pay. So, what we do is we pick up a tax anticipation note, which is a one year note, and um, we get it hopefully tomorrow, and then uh, have to pay it back by the end of the year from the cash flows which we're receiving from the tax proceeds from each of our districts. So ours was due uh, today. We actually paid off our tax anticipation note from last year today, and we're sitting there with a relatively modest balance in our accounts right now and looking to put another tax anticipation note in for the next fiscal year. What's the dollar amount with you? Uh, the dollar amount will be $3.9 million, I believe. Make a motion to approve the tax anticipation note for $3.9 million. Actually, uh, if I could, we do have a resolution that's required by council in this case because council needs to provide an opinion that we did all things on the up and up from their perspective. It's okay, can I just read through this quickly? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it gets a little dry. Uh, resolution, tax anticipation, borrowing, resolved at a duly called and warned special meeting of the board 
of school directors of the Windsor Central Modified Unified Union School District held July 8, 2019, at which a quorum of said directors was present in voting. It was determined that public interest and necessity demand that the district have funds available to pay its operating expenses. As the same come due to uh, prior to the receipt of the district's tax revenues in fiscal 2020. Be it further resolved that in order to assure that funds are available for such purpose, public interest and necessity demand that the district borrow funds by executing and delivering its tax anticipation promissory note. Dated July 9th, 2019 to Mescoma Savings Bank said note, evidencing a line of credit having a maximum principal value of 3.9 million. A draft of said note is attached and incorporated herein. Be it further resolved that the directors adopt, confirm, and authorize the execution and delivery of the note and the following additional documents required by Mescoma Savings, all in the form as presented by to the directors at a meeting on July 8th, uh, including a Vermont tax participation government certificate, a document headed errors and omissions, a Vermont municipal note notarization, and a disbursement request and authorization in the note collectively called bank documents. Be it further resolved that the chair, Paige Hiller, is hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver uh, the bank documents and that the treasurer is hereby requested to sign the Vermont Tax and Participation Government Certificate attesting to the signature of the chair thereon and to the delivery of the note all in final form. Be it further resolved that the directors affirm <laughs> And read, some people say lawyers be paid by the word. This is <laughs> be it further, sorry, Jennifer. Be it further resolved that the directors affirm and renew their adoption in 2018 of a municipal bond post issuance compliance procedure and make such procedures as the same may be amended from time to time hereafter applicable to the borrowing authority herein and any municipal indebtedness of the district now or hereafter outstanding. Uh -huh be it further resolved that we hereby certify and affirm that we are duly elected legislative body of the district and that our respective signatures or those of a quorum of the board are set forth below, and dated and by the board and all the signatures. Got that so all moved. Yes. Yes. No, so moved. Moved. <laughs> so moved. So <laughs> moved. I'm sure. Just <laughs> make sure they don't have an issue or everyone yes. understanding what was done. Yes. 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 No, Do I have there. a second first? Sure. Thank you. Bob? Richard, just curious, um, are we all with the Mascoma Bank and what kind of interest do we pay on we um, we weren't always with Mascoma Bank. We were with People's United before, and Calista went out on the rate for this, which is 3.05%. We also receive a compensating balance rate when we leave deposits in the bank up to this 3.9 million, which is a little bit higher. Yeah. So there's actually what's called a positive arbitrage. We make a little bit by borrowing the money each year. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is passed. If I could just hand this around and we'll. Yes. Yeah, so you could find your name, please. Find your name You're and we'll sign off. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, so we have two adoptions tonight for the annual report policy and the grading um, policy. Um, do you want to do them one at a time for I the do, motions? I, I do want to just point out something about the grading policy. Okay, yes. so why don't I'll we have a, a... Make a motion to approve the annual report Thank policy. You. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, go ahead. Um, for the grading one, it's such a long policy. Uh, we know we're doing uh, annual we're report first. this one here. Is oh, there any sorry, questions sorry. on this one? Oh. There's no questions on this. This is annual report. Anyone have a question? No. No. <coughs> okay. All those in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 And now okay. I'll make a motion to make make a motion to adopt the grading policy. Second. Thank you. Okay. Now go ahead. Okay. So it's a it's a pretty long policy. I just wanted to point out um, two pretty minor changes, and there was a couple of grammatical changes. Um, one is that we changed uh, the word daily to gradable homework assignments just to avoid confusion about whether homework was yes. counted twice, howls, and formative. And, um, and then uh, in howls, uh, it was suggested by you all at the last meeting that we add 
um, to the sentence, this assessment will be 5% of each course grade, to change that will be up to. But um, in our meeting the other day, we, uh, we, you know, we weren't there to, to talk about this, so I'm here to tell you that um, when we had that conversation, we actually talked about this sentence for at least an hour. <laughs> um, not kidding. And it, we wanted it to be 10% at first, and we talked to Garen, and um, he felt that there needed to be a little bit more um, work done on, on his side of things to, before he felt comfortable making it so high. And so we talked about the 5% being a one-year sort of pilot, and that we would revisit it. So um, I think, you know, so that's why as a committee we decided to recommend to you, again, that, that, it go, that we get rid of that up to. And in the first reading, we specifically asked Karen straight off on that also, because it was questioned by 5%, not 10% or whatever, or what that up to. And Garen said he wanted to have one set across the board by going saying at least. Up to the discretion no, no, of the teacher. No, then it's up to the discretion of the teacher. And he would rather have it in a pilot program just having it at 5% for now. And we did say it was going to be a pilot, that this Howells part would be a, a pilot for a year. But anything in here is, you don't have to call it a pilot. Policy can change every year if there's an issue. So that, that's, that's it for what I wanted to say about that. So if anybody has any, Does anybody have any questions? Okay. All those in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 Okay. So, what's next? So, Raina, how are we making this motion then to the second reading? So, if there are no changes to the second reading, you can motion to adopt at the next meeting. So, how, the, how should the motion be stated? Motion to move the district grade reorganization policy for adoption. Yeah, the motion meeting. to warn for adoption at the next meeting. Okay, so I'll make a motion to warn the district grade reorganization policy for our next meeting. Second. second. You second it? Yeah. 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 Just check her off every time. Okay. All right, so uh, I can say a few words about how we talked about this the other day in relation to your comments. I also um, kept very, um, we probably should have brought them very uh, detailed minutes so that you can see how our conversation was, was going and I highlighted all the changes so I can tell you. So the first thing that we changed was the name because that came up in your conversation It's a little bit confusing so we changed, I think it was Mary Beth's idea, change it to district um, rather than school. Um, that way it's clear it's sort of a larger systemic kind of thing. Um, we also, in the first sentence, changed uh, where it says across Wilcud District Build. I mean, uh, yeah, it says across now. It used to say within. Uh, we thought that added more clarity in that same vein. Um, so the next thing was, I don't, I forgot to leave the strike out. We took out a sentence that um, you had suggested that we take out, but we talked about this idea behind the sentence at length. Um, Basically, uh, what we have now is um, at the end, as you, as you can see it, the last sentence of the first paragraph, great configura configuration changes made on the basis of educational aims shall be made equitably for all affected students. Uh, basically, we're changing that from um, equally to equitably um, so that there's a little bit more flexibility, but still there is the sentence that expresses the importance of for communities and for students. So um, then the next one is that um, we changed, we, we understood that you did not want there to be not more than four warned informational meetings, so we got rid of that. Um, so that last sentence is slightly different. And I think that's, that's it for that policy. Okay, all those in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the motion is passed, so we go on to that adoption, correct, Raina? Yes, we will warn it for adoption at the next meeting. Thank you. Okay, yeah. 
Jim, you're pretty good. Well, I just figured since we're the policy committee that will make the first and second or any other policy, any other subcommittees when they come forward, I would expect somebody from there to make the, the okay. motion and then the second. So, Full closure, Jim? So uh, make a motion to adopt at our next meeting the school closure policy. One. Second. Okay. Okay. So I'll go over the student, and then you can ask questions or make comments. Um, so we understood that the sentence um, that used to be at the end of the first paragraph um, that talked about environmental conditions, um, that it was brought up that it was not really that it didn't really belong here in, a, in several different ways, and we agreed. So we struck that, um, and it's no longer there. Um, then. The only other two things that we changed was uh, in the second paragraph, the last sentence, um, for clarification purposes, we added the word combined supermajority there, where it just used to say supermajority, just to make sure that it's understood as all, all the towns together. Yeah, the third so, paragraph. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry yeah, sorry. there. You got it. Um, so that nobody yeah. ever thought that one town could make it not happen sort of thing. And then um, we... Also, for clarification, uh, we got rid of the word counted in the last sentence of that same paragraph. Votes shall be reported by each town. Mm -hmm. um, and that, those are the changes that we made there. Okay. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Uh, the is passed. Jim? So what are we doing here, Raina? <laughs> so this is our third meeting. What's that? Motion to warn to adopt the next meeting. Motion to warn campus sustainability policy at our next meeting. Second. Okay. So what we did here was uh, we changed the order of the, um, the things um, in outcomes, financial, and enrollment to that order before yeah. it was different. Um, and then um, we tweaked the language about op optimum definition or something. We decided that that's sort of like being a little bit pregnant. We can't, it's one or the other. So uh, we changed the sentence to we'll have an optimal enrollment um, rather than an optimum definition. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's, all we, that's all we did. Okay, any questions? All those in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great work. Okay. So, as I said in, um, our last uh, meeting is that um, my recommendation is that we hold with the four, five, and six Spanish program for the following year. Um, that we are at a place where I think it's going to be very difficult to find. Um, to find quality teachers across the district to be able to um, to work with our children in the lower grades um, because we're already challenged with finding um, a quality teacher in Killington from my understanding um, and that's my recommendation uh, it's not to say that we can't revisit this um, in the future, but I think that our now, our now understanding of um, why we went to this programming with the support of our principals um, and admin team um, for just four, five, six, currently was to address um, other issues within the school, which we had discussed briefly in our last couple meetings. Um, 
I open the floor to the board to continue the conversation. Um, this is not a vote tonight. It's just a conversation that we were going to continue. Anybody? I'll put my hand up first. Jim? So, I really just didn't like the way the communication was on this. It's happened, it's there. I, mm -hmm. I don't like it, and these are the reasons why I don't like it. Okay. Um, fourth, fifth, and sixth will now have three classes a week, 45 minutes. We listened and we see, not even listen, we see that our math and our English scores are low. And now yet, we're gonna pull, because we only have so many hours in a day, or in a week, we're going to be putting our students, that not all, even though my family does take up languages, okay, but not all students are language and gonna move on to languages. To me, elementary school is the basis of taking in math, English, science, history, and then they get a taste of art, music, language, and whatever else. And a half hour to me is a start, and that's all it's supposed to be. When they go on to middle school and high school, they are capable of signing up for a class every single day, or every other day, whichever day, which at least read or the white, or whatever it's called over here is, and for a longer period of time. I just wonder how, if we're here with scores of 53% on reading, I think, and 47% on math, that um, we are moving our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders for two hours and 15 minutes or whatever a week now into a language class, and where are we picking up that other hour and 45 minutes? We're taking it away from the classes that I think that are specific. That's my discussion. I'm not gonna have any other discussion about it. That's why I think it's not the correct move. Okay, any other comments? I'll take the other side. Wait, Bob, Bob, oh, sorry, Bob. Sorry. I agree with Jim. And my other concern is that, um, you know, from the outside, knowing that, um, you know, we exist in this precarious position of, um, you know, as the, as the, um, the VPRP said, declining enrollment. That's not really our case. We sort of held study. But I, I worry about the declining enrollment. And I think we have to be as competitive as we can be. And I think folks on the outside who are taking a, a, a long, hard look at where they want to buy property in the district to, you know, to bring their family to school are going to look at things like language. And how early are their kids being exposed to language? So I, th I think we've got to remain competitive. And quite frankly, those people aren't necessarily concerned about the issues that we need to deal with in order for us to have language for the younger grades. They're just not interested. That's ours to figure out, but not to me, not at the expense of not having some kind of introductory um, language um, for, you know, for those younger grades. I think it makes us less competitive. I think people will look at Hannibal Lyme, um, they'll look at other places and they'll see, as one of the things they take off, um, that languages are introduced later than they would prefer and it makes us less competitive. Okay. Melina? Sorry about that. That's um, I, I, I value you know, the cores as much as I value the arts and the specials. Um, and I, I just caution that we don't go too far into, and I appreciate the leadership team's recommendation, I, I really do. Um, so I don't want to take away from that at all. Um, I just. I've seen what the arts and language can do for children who struggle in those areas. And I feel that if we just focus solely on math and ELA and don't give kids a chance to be creative and have an outlet from those, you know, from, from those courts, we're actually doing a disservice to them. Um, and that's personal, but and I try to take that away from that, and I think that being on a board, excuse me, <coughs> that's one of the hardest things to do. Um, but I, when I think about it, I think if I wasn't sitting here, I'd be sitting there as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, and I would be saying the same thing. 
And so I feel like it needs to be said. And as an educator, I feel like I need to say it as well. Um, and so I, I see the scores as much as you do, Jim, and as much as the admin team does, and as much as everybody else has seen them. Um, but as a teacher, I've seen those kids who struggle in math and you know, in chemistry and science and all those other disciplines and how they can have <laughs> a reprieve and also from a linguistic, linguistic standpoint, that elasticity of the brain and how it helps them. So I, I just caution that we don't just go straight into you know, rigorous, and I, lose that, I use that word loosely because <laughs> it means different things to a lot of people, but, and that we lose sight of having a, you know, a rich curriculum for our kids. Um, and to Bob's point, he makes a great point too. I mean, we've had the languages for years in this district, and I know that now we might not be able to go back to where we were, but we have to find a way to be able to give our K through threes exposure. We just a balance. We have to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Adam. I, I'm in the same. I mean, I do everything you've said, Melina. I'm from Southern California. I'm bilingual. I have family that's been duly immersed since kindergarten, right? As Caucasians, and it, in as a psychologist and cognitive development and everything you're saying, Melina. I just an exclamation point, and I think, to me, it's it's expo It's the same thing we talk about with kids in sports, right? It's exposure rather than having them focus on one sport starting early on. And that's all they do. Giving them these opportunities, exposing them, and gradually developing it from there, so that they get to those later years. And if they want to hone in on that and specialize that, that's a great opportunity. But I, I really, I, I really, you know, feel that we're doing a disservice to our children's development by not. Having that, you know, my piece related to that is that, and I brought this up before, is that um, this wasn't presented in that way when we voted on it back at that time. And I, I would request that we look at minutes again to clarify that, but it wasn't presented in that manner. It was presented as a broad spectrum of specials. Anyone else? I just offer a couple of thoughts. So thank you for your, your feedback and, and uh, thoughts on this matter. Um, what I've tried to capture in the memo that you have in your book is that we, we are, in fact, working very, very different, uh, uh, dedicatedly to develop a balance within the district. Uh, and so when you look at a seven hour day, three and a half hours of that day are opportunities for kids to be exercising at a recess, having lunch, having an enrichment activity related to that. And, and that leaves us about four hours and 10 minutes in terms of doing the academics in every academic day. Um, and, that, and trying to figure out that balance is, is not easy. Um, and we know that, we, that our, our greatest critical resource is time, it's not money. You know, what do we fill in those seven hour days? And how do we meet the need of trying to give kids an education that allow them to develop biliteracy um, in a way that is going to be most compelling um, and also meet the needs of our community to have outcomes for students that are a level that people are looking for. Um, and what I, in, so I've, I've kind of outlined that for you in this memo. Um, this is a leadership team that is very much um, a, invested in seeing that students have the opportunity to learn a second language and have been looking at both the recommendations of the committee, looking at what they see in the classrooms, um, and have, have spent an enormous amount of time coming up with a combination that we think hits the best balance for the many perspectives that are out there in the community. Um, so what I, um, and as, as we've said, this is not necessarily a forever schedule, but it, it is the schedule that we feel like we need right now in order to do the work of the strategic plan. And our strategic plan in our first year is about getting our foundational systems correct, those foundational areas of mathematics and those foundational areas of English language arts. We're not giving up all of the other things, but that's our focus. And our ability to do that work, we need to look at that valuable resource of time and how we spend it. 
Um, I know that there has, you know, we've talked about the opportunity that presents itself with some technology to give kids exposure to language in those earlier levels, and I and we, we continue to believe that's still a viable pathway and allows us to give kids exposure to a range of languages that we can do with a particular a teacher that comes in with a particular language. Um, so it, it continues to be the recommendation of our team, um, but we've talked deeply about curriculum needs. We have looked at and considered the strategic plan um, that all of our communities came together on and, and helped us to craft. Um, we've looked at student needs and, um, and scheduling needs. Um, and that the decision to put a program in place like this was to follow, um, to provide opportunities for kids to have multiple exposures that were not happening before. Um, and also allow us to focus on building the efficiency in the really core academic areas. Um, and that we, we, like you, want to continue to revisit this and, and look at whether or not we've got the right balance. But balance is something that we absolutely consider, we absolutely debate, and what you have in front of you is the recommendation of the leadership team about what the structure of this should be for next year. Mary Beth, can I just add on a little bit the special perspective of that piece? Is that okay? So for us, <clears throat> I will tell you first that the pre-K universal was a gift to us, the special ed. It has allowed us to begin to equalize the playing field in terms of what academic capacity all students have. And I will say that in the last, you know, in the last few years where we really have, as buildings, focused on that early ed K3 foundational skills, teachers have been getting much better about identifying those students who don't have those prerequisite skills, rhyming, you know, exposure to literature, all those pieces. The sooner we identify a student who has a discrepant level of skill and we are able to address that, the sooner they, the whole class is at the same capacity. So, and I appreciate it. My kids had, you know, went through the Woodstock Elementary, had early Spanish, but I also know that one of my kids struggled early on and we didn't catch it till third grade. Having that focus, K123, on those foundational skills means that our classes are tighter in terms of the, 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 um, the range of skills in a class. Um, and that feeds from year to year. So if we can really put that energy in K123 around making sure that all students have the same or close to those foundational skills, that's going to build from year to year. And, and that can't be undone. And when students come to eligibility and special ed, that's when it's pulling kids out of classrooms, that's costing the district more. It really is a negative impact. So just for the special ed side of things, I really appreciate the strategic panel plans focus on foundational skills as well as how it really leads to student success as a whole and not just for individual students. So. Thank you, Sharon. Connie? I think just as I listen to all of this and all of these hours, and I'm, I know it's not our job to kind of like look at this and try to fix it, but right. I, I really identify, I think, as, as my child is going into fifth grade, um, what Jim is saying about you know, we still have, you know, we still have math and, and language arts issues with those kids. You know, and, and I worry a little bit about three days a week at 45 minutes for those kids with Spanish when they haven't had that level of intensity of Spanish. And, and, and again, educators, maybe this is something you've already looked at. You know, whether, whether that's a, a, a time that um, might be better used, say, at a half an hour twice a week for those kids, and then that additional time then is spread spread amongst the younger grades. Could we could we readjust that total hour with more intense? Obviously, for our four, five, and six, but leave something exposure-wise. And you know, thinking outside of the box, that it's maybe you know, K through one of the you know the bigger school, they're in the auditorium and or they're in the gym and they're getting a, a larger yield lesson. You know. Um, I don't know, maybe that's what, what we have to think of to get all of these things potentially covered if, if so we acknowledge that those things are issues. I, I think that we have to hold with the recommendation for the next year. Mm -hmm. um, Paige, can I ask why? Why? <laughs> because one, they, the principals have the schedules in place 
for the upcoming year. Two, there is a there is a um, issue with hiring people at the schools to make this possible. Um, that's one of our biggest <coughs> challenges is finding the employees to be able to do this um, work for us. I think, to be quite honest, that's the biggest issue, is finding that employee who is willing to go from Killington to Barnard to Reading for, for Bar uh, Killington, Reading, and Barnard schools for K through three. It is a huge challenge to find that person to be able to do that traveling. Um, and, and I think that, unfortunately, I think that that's our biggest dilemma, is, is finding that employee. We, we, haven't really, we haven't tried. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would add that, that the biggest dilemma is time, right? And how we spend our, how we prioritize our time. And this, you know, this recommendation and the work that we've done is to try to look at balancing time. So we have both tried to look at poor outcomes and we've tried to honor the value that we want our students to become biliterate or any student that would like to be. And that we know that these multiple exposures are what is helpful in terms of develop, de de developing that biliteracy. Um, and that a single exposure does very, very little in terms of that, uh, in terms of developing a, 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 an acquisition of the language, it can be exposure, and I think that, the, that we've identified some ways in which we can do some exposure for students. Um, so that 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 is really the critical issue: is the time that we have. One of the things that we've talked about within the three times five <coughs> is that we do have students that we know in grades four, five, and six struggle with some of the poor and the content um, and need double doses of mathematics and need double doses of ELA. And so that for some students, we will recommend that they use that time to reinforce those, those core skills. Um, and so that we are, we, we, we're not leaving anybody behind. Um, and that would be a conversation with, with teachers and families about that. So that we are attentive even in those grades to look at ensuring that all of our students have that, the opportunity to develop those, those core skills. Um, so the, 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 the big challenge for us is prioritizing the school day, um, following through with where we are, we have committed in terms of our strategic plan, um, and and ensuring that kids do get balance. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Melina and Adam, about we we don't want a day where kids are you know, rigorous academic content without having these different outlets. But we, we do have these outlets built into our schedule. They are important for kids, and we have attempted to honor them in our thinking around this. Um, the, there is a practical issue right now related to quality candidates that, um, that teach world languages um, and the, the licensing requirements that we are, we are um, responsible for following. Um, so that is certainly an issue, but the, the larger issue with where this recommendation comes from is time and prioritizing that in the school day. Hold on, Chip had a question first. So I'm hearing two different things here. I'm hearing one that we're going to have Spanish three days a week for 45 minutes. Then what I just heard was is that if my child, thank God guys, I have a greater in so, but if my child was still in kindergarten, first, second, I'm sorry, fourth, fifth, or sixth, and it's having a math or an English lower score, that then they will not have to go to Spanish three days a week for 45 minutes, that they will be getting extra help from who and how many students, and where does that logistics come in 
And who determines that? Does a parent come in and say, you know, my student's at 53% on their whatever these state score, uh, states That's test right. call nowadays, okay? Um, and I don't want my kid in Spanish, so I want my kid in math. Um, my, my, my child is not going to go on to be a, um, doesn't need to be bilingual. My, 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 I want my student, I want my child to be a, a chemist, a scientist. I want my student to be a writer. And I want more time because I, I think that statement just saying that if your child needs more help in the other core, then I wonder how many parents are going to be coming in and saying, I want history, I want science, I want math, I want English. That's more important. Probably a test today. score that would determine that, I think. Well, when, when the district has scores of 47% in math and 53% in English, I, I don't think a parent's going to have too much arguments um, doing that. I, I, I guess we're saying, and, and I'm agreeing with you, Paige, is that. This is what somehow we approved. Maybe the communication wasn't great, but what I'm asking now is for the questions is that if there is um, 80 kids in Killington, well, how many would be in 4th, 5th, and 6th? 50, Jennifer? 40, 50, 60? 50 kids? So let's say there's 50 children in 4th, 5th, and 6th, and all of a sudden 25 of them need some need help in math, some need help in science, some need help in, do you have the staff? I, I would think that the teachers were teaching. So would Spanish, teaching. that Spanish block for 45 minutes is not a special for, for a teacher. So students would be with their teacher if they were not in Spanish. What that cutoff is for identifying would be, you know, a conversation among educators and input from, from a parent. Um, and, you know, I, I can't tell you exactly what that would be, but I, I could tell you there are probably about, you know, 10%, 15% of those kids that really would benefit highly from extra time in core curricula. It's, it's, so, that, so those, those students would be with their teacher, not and, and that's the educational support team process, which is a documented process with a timeline, expectations, outcomes, strategies. It's not, it's, and it has to come through. So you're either an EST, 504, an IEP student. So each of the students have a plan that have outcomes and dictated expectations. So it's not a random process. It's a really well vetted and often um, reevaluated right, for each right. school, not just Killington. Right. And I was just using, I always yeah. use no, no, just, no, no, yeah, no, just, but just to know that that's a now. consistent practice between all the buildings. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I'm just, I'm just asking the question, of mm -hmm. where is the logistics thought of, or, or have they, maybe they haven't been thought mm -hmm. out. I mean, to me, it seems like there's a recommendation to go to 45 minutes, three days a week for 4th, 5th, and 6th. And then I just heard, you know, if your child needs help in math or the four course or whatever, they can be pulled out of the, the, the language class and put into one of these cores. And I just want to make sure that we're not sitting here in, in, in January saying, I'm having a really hard time because my teachers should be, these kids all should be over in Spanish and this is the time that they have a lot to do all the work to get the day ready. That's all. I, I was just going to offer that I don't think this is a new system. I think the system has been in place when I was teaching at West it was already working that way. So I had students who were in my class and then I had students who needed help and they would get pulled out of my class and it was few. It was not a lot. I had big enrollments in my classes and some of the students would get pulled out. It was a very small percentage and it was it was way back when. <laughs> so I don't think this is gonna all of a sudden. So it's be not a it's problem. not a new it's system. Not a new system. It's system. not something no. that that um, okay. Yeah. No, it's always again, <laughs> special ed yeah. students, yeah. students who have challenges learning their native language. I mean, you know, that's an opportunity. Be introducing two languages simultaneously with while one being solidified is really challenging. And so often, that's an opportunity that we use as special ed teachers 
to we really want to reinforce the you know the English, and so we're going to work on literacy skills during that time. And so that's an opportunity for us to pull students when they're not in with their peers for a content area class. In four, five, six, percent. Right. And it happened the other way too. I had some sped students in my class right. that parents wanted them to have language yep. and mm -hmm. the recommendation was that they should be in, you know, have, um, they, they should not be in Spanish, but they wanted to be in language class and, and so it happened both ways. I think it's a decision that Sherry said that, that you know, is well established the education support team process. Yeah looks at every single student and all the data and and decides with that team what's the best scenario. There are some students who are weak in English who happen to be fluent in Spanish and they do better if they stay in Spanish, although some usually too easy for them. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, I just wanted to say that I have a master's in uh, second language acquisition and I've had several years teaching um, a second language. And the best age to learn a language is eight because you need a, a basis in your, your, you need to have literacy in your native language, you need to keep that up. If you lose that literacy in your native language, that's not a good thing. The advantage to starting really young is pronunciation. You can get a, you know, if you, the earlier you get a language, the more you sound like a native speaker. But there's tons of research out there that shows that eight years old is, is mm -hmm. the prime age to really take and, and be immersed in a language and learn it. I don't think 30 minutes once matter. a week at a kindergarten is really best practice for anybody. It's not. If we're going to do language, I think we should do it right. Okay, I have to respectfully, respectfully disagree. And I'll say my background is master's in linguistics. and. From zero to nine, zero to nine, our neurons are, neurons are firing for language. And yes, pronunciation, key, from zero to nine. But it's not just the pronunciation. And yes, there's a lot of factors that go into place, and it's environment, and it's, there's so many. I mean, we could have this discussion <laughs> yeah. for hours, <laughs> but I really want to put it out there that, you know, I, I just I have to. We'll Respectfully have to keep disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yes. give you my research, you give me yours. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not a voting member on this, but I just, I, I guess I just wanted to say two, two points. One is I, I look at this, I mean, yes, I didn't love how all this was communicated and we need to work on that. But uh, this seems like a very sensical plan to me. I understand the other side and I appreciate that. but. For all of the reasons that have been articulated here and by Sherry, um, but even from the beginning, just understanding that um, if I had a small child again, or if my child was small again, I mean, uh, I would choose having the sort of doubling up of language starting in grade three rather than the little bit starting in grade four. Grade four. four. What, sorry. <laughs> you wouldn't get that your choice. Too. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I just think, you know, I have seen a lot of kindergartners spend a whole year learning the colors and, you know, that sort of thing, and, and, and the numbers maybe. Um, and, and I do think that, you know, I think probably both methods can work, but this, this makes a lot of sense to me um, from a pedagogical standpoint. And, and I guess, you know, we have to have all of this sort of criteria here so we can assess how much time we're spending on things, and that makes sense, but also there is overlap. You know, so there can be the study of language within the music, within the art, within the, you know, a lot of the programs. And I would hope that langu language would not just come, come through in um, online stuff, but in visual materials that are throughout the schools and in books and things like that so that, you know, language exposure will be there regardless of uh, the specific class. Thanks. Adam, did you have? Well, I think that we have exhausted um, this conversation right now. I would recommend that we continue exploring um, how we can um, see how we can expose our children to languages in their earlier stages in the future, I think. 
that it's important for our children to be well-rounded children to the arts as well. I've always believed that, music, art, and language. Um, and I, I, I think it would be important for us to make a strong district by, by continuing that research. Um, however, I think that we have this in place for the next year, and we should support that decision that was made in the budget process. Um, I think it's been a learning experience for all of us, both in, um, I think Patty brought up a really good um, point of because we are doing this new, initi new initiative, what are we giving up to do that in new initiative? And I think those are good questions to um, be answered in the future by the admin team as a whole so that we have more of an understanding so that in the future we can, um, when parents come to us asking why a program has been changed, we can intelligently answer them with the why of, of why those decisions were made um, intelligently so we have a fuller understanding of the process. Um, but I, I think that there has been a shortage of, as Mary Beth has said, in, in being able to find people to put into place um, for this upcoming year anyway. I think it's a real challenge for us, as we are seeing in the challenge of fulfilling that job, even up at Killington currently, um, as I understand. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, I, I again, I, I want to share with the board that this has been a thoughtful and careful process. Um, we know that there are lots of things to juggle and balance, right? And if, if we, we had a school day that had 10, 12 hours, we could probably put it all in. But, but we don't. Um, and we, we haven't, we are putting in a plan that helps to have consistent, equitable experiences for all kids in the district. We've been thoughtful about the time and our priorities as they relate to the strategic plan. And the, the conversation at the leadership team has been, you know, down the road, we need to continue to look at this, to say, is there a way to do something at the younger levels as well? Um, but that right now, given the realities of what we have in front of us, we think this is best for kids. And I, and we, we hear and share your concern about being sure that kids have access to opportunities for second language acquisition. Um, we think that the, the way that it's structured actually provides a, a very competitive world language program within the state. Um, and that we, we are certainly willing to continue to look at how we might reintroduce some of the direct instruction. Again, I think that there are ways in which we can do exposure in the next year. Um, and that we are, we are working to put together for your students the very best balanced education program we can. Um, and oftentimes those decisions are not easy. Um, but they're done thoughtfully and they're done with the best interest of your children when we make them. Bob? Mary Beth, was there any consideration given to structuring this in a way, even if you, even if you couldn't offer it until mid-year, based on additional staff hiring of some kind, somehow, uh, to make it an, an elected for those parents who feel strongly that early exposure is what they would prefer? Is there any way? Is there any way to offer a level of resource to be able to have it? What we what we what we recommended is that right now one of the ways in which we can get kids exposure is through some some really strong digital resources that allow kids to have exposure at, at, for a number of different languages. Um, you know, down the road, is there a way that we? can start to think about what schedules could look like. They, you know, we can continue to brainstorm, 
But right now, we really want to hold to maintaining the, the, t the time frame that we have here to give students an hour of reading curriculum every day, to give students an hour for math instruction and writing instruction. Um, that, that this time period is really critical. Um, and if, we, if kids fall behind when they're in those younger grade levels and we're not building those solid skills, that can have a really significant impact down the road. And our strategic plan is asking us to really pay attention to these core academic skills and get them up to a level. Um, and at the same time, paying attention to the other components of the portrait of a graduate. And right now, I think what we have in front of us is the best balance, um, but not that it can be revisited and shouldn't be revisited at a different time. Um, and again, I do think that there are ways in which we can give students um, exposure through some digital pieces at this point. Um, but I, I think it would be very challenging to try to do something like that in here. In terms, but in terms, we were talking about in terms of any kind of instruction, not, not digital, but instruction, you'd say, would be challenging. I think it would be very challenging. I guess at a gut level, my, my biggest reservation with this is that there are a set of kids, just based on who they are, that aren't falling off. Who the exposure to language and, and, and some rigor, whatever that is, would be beneficial. So that's the reason I ask in terms of looking at this. If we have to, if we have to put it off for a year. Is there is there any way to look at this immediately following this decision and to say, okay, let's keep exploring it and look at options as a way to be able to bring a, a level of resource for kids who have the ability to elect in based on who they are and where they are academically. Also, if, if I could just, it no, 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 no. Sam was next. I just, I'm um, just clarifying one thing. No, he wants me to follow the rules. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Follow the rules. No, I've been told okay. follow the rules. Um, really, honestly, I was just going to ask. I really understand um, schedules and, and and employees really working around have in their, their strengths. I was just wondering if we're going to continue advertising for, well, even though if we go forward with this for the next year, we're going to continue to advertise that we would like to find someone and then maybe we can, you know, we can figure out that point. Yeah, so we have the position advertised. We and are we're still going to keep it open. No matter the until level. we, well, because we, we don't, we do yeah. not currently have the instructional staff to provide the language instruction in grades four, five, and six at Killington. Oh, right. okay. We, we do not, and one of the things that we are committed to is putting good quality teachers in front of their kids, right? And we don't want to hire somebody just to put a body in, right? Because that, that time is then useless for your kids, right? So we, we have some standards about who we're trying to bring in. Um, that position is posted, Mary is interviewing, um, we are continuing to look at candidates. Yeah. Um, there are, um, you know, depending on who we find, I mean, yeah. the people that we are no, we going have to find somebody. somebody you know, forward, you know, but right, so you're, you're looking at something yeah. like that. You know, there, there are structures within days where we can look, you know, we're trying to look at individual needs of students, right? But within those individual needs, those structures are not consistent across the district yet. Um, so, you know, depending again on who we find, um, and we're, we're really hopeful that we're going to be able to find someone. You know, I, I don't want to rule out that there's nothing that we could do in terms of supporting students, mm -hmm. but it would, whatever solution it would be, would most likely be inequitable in the sense that we would have to be location specific. <coughs> and, um, you know, clearly we, you know, we hear this issue is important for the community. Um, I, again, I, I want to share that there, there is, you know. The time <coughs> the priorities are important. There is significant concern that one time a week has very little impact on students. Um, and but you know how can we deal with the exposure issue and how you know hopefully as we move forward and we're really looking at our core academic outcomes that we can get to a place where we can revisit this this piece 
and this year if opportunities arise we won't certainly close our eyes to that and say oh forget you know we'll continue to look and see if there's something that can be done um, in terms of giving kids exposure um, but there's there are a lot of complexities associated with that so I wouldn't want to promise anything related to that. Pamela. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, as Bob was asking his question I thought that the second to last paragraph in this um, statement uh, that there may be opportunities to provide Spanish instruction during the what I need block and I wondered if that you know if, if that is something that we should be talking about since maybe there are some communities that that um, you know as it says here that brings up some equity issues but uh, maybe that's something that we should be talking about in the fall of, of if there can be different yeah, so that would be, be so something like that where we're not pulling from that core academic right. time is a possibility again you know one of the things that that started with this is that we had specials across the district that were were ranging from um, five times to ten times a week right and some schools that had a language exposure one time and sometimes that went in some schools that had it twice a week and that was just within the, the world language so we don't yet have a consistent wind block across the district you know that it's something that we're looking at um, but that is something that you know if if there's a way that we can look at this you know and if there is an opportunity to provide additional exposure to students you know that we're i don't want to say oh no we wouldn't do that you know if, if we see it if we see something that could possibly help with this then we're, we're still certainly work to do that but whatever whatever that would be i am sure that there would be other compromises that would have to be made. Jim? i have my hand up i know i know <laughs> So a student that's in second grade and going into third this next year is going to be dropped from language. Mm -hmm. What if the student in second, I'm picking up from where you are, what if the student in second going into third grade this upcoming year is academically high in the four cores and really has picked up on Spanish and would really like to? I mean, I know in some of our elementary schools, if a child is ahead in math or ahead in English or whatever, they do move up with them. Within the school, is that? I think that's what you were asking. I mean, I'm asking a little more broadly. Oops, right. No, I, 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 you know what? I find it really funny that here we are in board. I have to get this out. We are trying to teach our children to be um, critical thinkers and what are the rest of the words or whatever, and we're trying to do a proficiency, and we're supposed to be able to come into a group, and we're supposed to be able to communicate what's wrong with the problem in front of us. And we're all supposed to be able to kick in at whatever time. But yet, this board wants to stick to something called Rogers Rules that was introduced in, what, 1800? <laughs> I, I find that just freaking ironic. I really have to say that. I mean, it, it just blows me away. Um, here we want our kids to, be able to sit in a room, but yet we're going to get stuck. And, and I have three minutes, I guess, because that's what it says in Rogers Rules. I have three minutes before I have to shut up and then keep on going on. It's, it's, just, it's just really ridiculous. Um, critical thinking. What I'm really afraid of is that what's going on, the conversation that's going on here, and I think Sam kind of fell into it at one point. I'm sorry, but I think you did fall into it. Are we still looking for that teacher? And I think you were leading for like kindergarten through three because what I really hear out of here, and I think what the community might hear is that, and, and this is the sad part, this decision was based on that administration believes this is the best move. And we're supposed to take that, and I am, okay? But what's going to come out of here is, is that the reason why this board didn't do this was because of financials, and we can't find a teacher. That, you know, that's, that's, the, that's what people will come out of here with, is, and, and that's not the reason. I get that's not the reason. I really do. It's not that we can't find a teacher. I would hope we could be critical thinkers, and if we say 0.7, for Killington, and then go out to Reading, I think it is. Is that the deal? No, we don't need Reading. Oh, no, no, we don't need. So it's Killington, and who are we looking Killington for? Killington, we just need. Right now. Just Killington. Person, not okay, because I know a while ago we were looking to share, and we were looking for somebody, and then saying they have to go all the way out to Barnard or somewhere or whatever. Is somebody mm -hmm. talking? 
and, and, and of, course, <laughs> of course nobody's going to take that job. So, I mean, um, and my last 30 seconds here is that, you know, we sat over at Woodstock and we put together an agenda and we had said that on our agenda there would be citizens input in each one of our meetings, even if it is a special meeting, it should be, okay, that there should be something for, for there. We also said there would be, um, if there was any, there would be um, um, an agenda in here that everything was all put in. But at the end, there was supposed to be, um, yeah. No, there, there is supposed to be board members' concerns or any other business, and it's not on there. And it hasn't been on there since day one. And I think that we should be putting that in there at the end or the beginning of the meeting. Thank you. Bob, could you have anything to say? Just, just that I still, at a gut level, feel like we are, uh, we should be able to do, fun fundamentally, this is, this is, not having the understanding that Mary Beth has, the leadership team has, that we should be able to do both. Financially, instructionally, time-wise, there's gotta be a way, other school districts do it. They do it, they find a way to do it. And I, 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 just, I just think we should be able to find a way to do it, and, and that we're gonna lose a year, um, and I would hope the intent of this board would be to you know, come back and revisit this, not, not based on, I, I mean, I think language is part of getting to fundamental you know, core curricular outcomes. It's part of that. It's not separate from it. It's not an extra. It's it's sort of primary to 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 learning. So I feel like we're gonna lose a year and I feel like we should be able to do both. That's just the way. Um, Patty Patterhand. Um not about the language thing, but I think uh, I like Robert Lewis Award. <laughs> I think um, whether it's on this political stage or any political stage, stability is timeless. Mm -hmm. And I'd like for us to honor that. Honor that. Thank, Thank you. you. Adam? Just it, just so it's not missed, and I think it's a, it, this is a I see this as a learning opportunity for us as a, a board of nearly 20, like I've said multiple times. Yes. Um, this stemmed from the budgetary process going back into late fall, winter, right? And I think that we need to be having these, to, you know, and we, I think we did a really good job trying to plan as much as we could. But issues that I've had and that were raised with this was the communication and the budgetary process about this. And that this is something for us to learn from moving forward into this next year, particularly as we're talking about this is just one year for right now. Mm -hmm. So how do we adapt, but how do we, how are we clear and, and um, articulate about what we're projecting to do? No, I think this has been a huge learning experience for all of us, administrators and board members, as, as we have discussed. Um, I think that um, we really need to kind of reevaluate how we can expose our children to the arts from K through six. Um, and, and move forward with the conversation as we move forward. Um, Motion to adjourn. No, we have a personnel. Yeah. You were here when we were adding things. On we the added menu. stuff, Jeff. <laughs> hopefully this one. Did we add to this input? It's not executive session. No. <laughs> no, it's not executive session. No, no, no. Okay. Quick personnel piece that I want to bring to people. Um, I, Maggie, principal at Woodstock Elementary School, um, informed me that her kindergartens now at Woodstock are up to 18 in each section, um, and we only have one kindergarten aid budgeted. Um, it is our strong recommendation that we add a second assistant in for those kindergartners. Um, when you're talking about five-year-olds, having one aid split between two classes is not enough. Um, and so we are looking to add a second kindergarten aid to the Woodstock Elementary School. Um, and talking with Richard, we feel that we would be able to cover that cost within the existing budget. But I want to make you aware of that situation. Will they be bilingual? Here we go, I can tell we have problems. Critical thinking, problem solving, right? Do you have any motion for that? I don't think we do. I just wanted to make sure that. just want to make sure. You're going to fall in the budget. 
Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.